Welcome to this episode of the Brand Gravity Show, where we explore the intersection between psychology and branding. My guest today is Lindley Battle, who is an amazing human. She is a fine art photographer who owns both an international wedding studio and a visual branding agency. And on a personal note, she has taken brand portraits for me twice and is one of the most incredible creatives that I've ever collaborated with. So excited to share her genius with you, where we talk about how to get the best brand portraits or photography for your business, how to stay in your own lane, and how she's been able to grow an incredible business in her own way. I'm so honored and so thrilled to be able to share her with you. Let's get into the interview. I um, always knew that photography was going to kind of be it for me, but didn't really understand what form that would take and really got brand photography kind of just dropped in my lap when I was in my early 20s. Um, I started working for a company that sells nursing shoes of all things and um, I didn't know this about you. I love this. <laughs> yeah, it's my like wild, weird intro into this whole business. But um, I'm really grateful for my client with that company. I, I actually still shoot for them, but just kind of got to learn the ropes of what brand photography really was and what creating a story and a lifestyle around a product or a service looked like. And so, you know, for years with them, I got to kind of explore. SEO and web marketing and storytelling, visual storytelling. And it was amazing. And so I, I've kind of ventured into a bunch of different realms of photography since then, but it's kind of always come back to a basis in storytelling for individuals. And in a lot of ways that works with brands. Mm-hmm. I am so lucky because Lindley has shot now twice my own brand portraits and they are just impeccable. So I will absolutely be sharing those in a link below. But tell me, when you get contacted by somebody who wants brand photography, what are some of the first things that you do with them? That's a great question and something that um, we as a business have kind of been thinking about a lot in the last year or so. We we just went through a big, I wouldn't call it a rebrand because I feel like that can be such a catch-all word, but kind of just a (laughs) evaluation of the why behind what we do and A big thing for me is helping businesses and solopreneurs understand what really lies beyond their brand, beyond just, I need great headshots. And so a big part of whenever anyone reaches out to me for brand photography is I I try to walk them through, what is your brand? What is the basis of your brand? Are you actually ready for brand photography or do you need to kind of reevaluate who you are and what you're doing? And then from there, get brand photography. So Mm -hmm. um, we've gotten pretty deep lately in making sure that people are just super grounded in what their brand stands for so that we can correctly visually represent that and make it look different than the 10 other people that I've shot for that do what they do. Exactly. Exactly. You are preaching my language because I always (laughs) tell people that you need to start with the brand standards first. You have to know the inside of your brand before you're making decisions about how you're going to express yourself on the outside. And I was so impressed when we started working together the second time, you asked really great questions about who I looked up to, what inspired me, what I was trying to communicate. And not only in the eternal sense, but what was going on in my business right now that we could build a shoot around to be strategic. So that is super cool. How can we impact the story that we tell through brand photography? Like what are our tools in the toolbox, if you will? To piggyback on what I was just saying, I think one of the biggest things that a person can do to really make sure that their brand photography stands out is to understand their brand and understand not only who they're speaking to, but what they're trying to say. And um, I just did two big brand shoots last week and yours being one of them and my friend Ashley being the next day. And it's insane to me how, you know, you two are fairly similar people, both amazing female entrepreneurs with a great message and very clear branding, very clear ICA, very clear idea of your positioning in the market. And the shoots were so wildly different because you two are speaking to two totally different people. And it was so amazing. I I remember sitting back after the second shoot and thinking about that. And everyone's shoot can be so 
specific and unique because they're speaking to such specific and unique people and they are themselves such specific and unique people. So I think the biggest piece of advice that I always give my branding clients is to really think about what you're trying to say and who you're trying to say it to. Mm, Yeah. For me and for anybody that's thinking about a shoot, I know that you do this actually for your clients as a part of the communication or the planning process, which is amazing because I know a lot of photographers don't go this far, but I need to sit down with visual inspiration to start to make that connection. It's like, okay, if I'm trying to show up as this like modern, more edgy, minimalist version of myself, like that feels like the best version of myself. What does that actually look like? So I love going out and finding like a mood board on Pinterest and you actually do that for your clients. How do you, do, is it just like reading the intake questionnaire and then feeling that vibe and going out and finding it or what's your process? For oh, it's a whole, reason. it's a whole crazy thing. It's, um, it's probably a little excessive, but I feel like it's so important because, you know, I would never want to do the same shoot for two different people. So when I onboard a branding client, especially if it's the first time that I'm working with them, I go into a deep dive. I will spend hours on their Instagram. I'll see who they follow. I'll see what brands they follow. Obviously, you know, in my questionnaire, I ask a bunch of different questions so that I can get a feel for what. Uh, visual presence you're trying to convey as a brand. So I'll ask what social media and website platforms that you like the look of, what social media and website platforms you like the messaging of, and then go through there and just kind of really try to parse out who this person is and what it is that they want to get across and how they want to get it across. And so from there, um, I'll obviously take, you know, I have amazing clients like you who will send me visual inspiration to start, which is amazing. But then I have some clients who have no idea where to start or, you know, this is their first brand shoot and they don't know what they don't know. So I'll go for them and kind of read through, try to read between the lines of everything that they've sent me and create what I think is their best visual presence. And then I'll always send that to them and just make sure that we're on the same page. But I think it's really important to just load every image that we take with the essence of the brand. And, you know, photography is so unique in that every photographer has a style, but mm-hmm. ultimately with branding photography and what makes branding photography so unique is that your style is essentially your client style when you're doing it. Oh, that's such a good point. How do you recommend that people find the right photographer for them? Oh, that's hard. (laughs) Other than coming to Greensboro or flying Lindley out to wherever you are, (laughs) which you absolutely do. I know. Uh, (laughs) No, no. I mean, and I think there is a great fit for everyone. I tend to work with clients that are a lot like myself. So I think that's kind of the first step is to find Mm -hmm. a photographer who really you feel like jives with you on a personal level and who you can be really candid with and really open with. And, you know, a shoot is really vulnerable and especially you've created this brand and you're trying to showcase it. I mean, you're going to be a little nervous and maybe a little on edge. And I mean, you need to really trust that the person that's facilitating the shoot has your back. But beyond that, I would say looking for a brand photographer, first of all, you you want to make sure that you are hiring an actual branding photographer, not mm-hmm. just a portrait photographer who's done a brand shoot here or there because branding is so specific. And I've definitely done this throughout my career, hired people for brand shoots. And I'm like, oh, they didn't give me any direction. And then looking back, I'm like, well, of course they didn't. That wasn't their job. But so hire someone who really understands the industry, the market, and who wants to understand your business as a whole. And then I would say also looking at their portfolio and looking for a wide variety of work is really important. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm also a wedding photographer. And if you go on my wedding website, pretty much every gallery is going to look very similar because I want my clients to understand exactly what they're getting. And I deliver a very cohesive style of wedding photos. If you go on my branding website, they're completely different because that's not, it's not a wedding. It's not my story to tell. It's, it's your story to tell. So I think that that's a big thing to look for with branding photographers in general is does all their stuff look the same? Because if so, they may need to grow a little bit. Mm-hmm. 100%. It's such a great place to invest in your brand, I think. And I'm biased because I value photography highly. But I think that investing in brand photography is one of the best places to put your money because your photos can tell so much of the story and they can show up in so many places. So yeah, if anybody is wondering about where to invest, I think that that is key, especially if you're building a brand online in any way, shape or form. I mean, I think it's crucial. I mean, it's just, it's so interesting to see what difference it makes when you land on a social media platform or a website and you see branded photos, even if, I mean, 
you know, even if you're mixing in your own photos or, you know, Mm -hmm. we, we manage social media clients and I always work with them on this because inevitably a lot of people want to bring in their own photos and I completely understand that. Yeah. But as long as you have some kind of cohesive visual presence, it's, it's just instantly calming to the eye and it gives your audience the idea that you care about what you're doing, that you're to be taken seriously. And, you know, I mean, I almost consider it the bare minimum Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. running a successful digital business. Yeah, I 100% agree. What mistakes do you see most often? I think the biggest one that I see is just people not being cohesive. And I think that comes from not taking the time to understand messaging. I'll do website audits for clients and I'll go on and, you know, their logo will be completely incohesive with their photography, which will be completely incohesive with their site design. And, you know, it's just visually confusing from start to finish. So I think that being really grounded in who you are and what story you're trying to tell allows you to visually get that across. Especially when you're in the beginning stages of bootstrapping your business and putting together all of these different elements, because there's a lot when you're starting a business. But if you do all of those things separately, especially with different creatives each time without getting clear on that red line that's running through everything, that you're going to end up looking like that hodgepodge of ideas all scotch taped together or like kind of a Frankenstein brand if you aren't careful. So if you're feeling that way, going back to the starting line and figuring out what your core message is, is a really great first step. I'd love to shift gears a little bit, Lindley. I'm so impressed with what you've accomplished in your business and I don't know the full backstory. So this is totally my desire to know, but like you've been featured in all these really big publications. You have traveled all over the world. What do you attribute to your success on either side of the business or just in general? Ooh, I would say I have always been unwilling to compromise in doing things the way that I feel is the right way to do them. And it's made life a lot harder in a lot of senses. And um, it's definitely brought its own challenges. But I think at the end of the day, I've always run my business and my life with really strong intuition. And I think that's kind of how it's turned into what it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that so much. I think that so often we feel like, especially when we're getting started, we feel like we need to follow all of the best practices or we need to do what these people that are more successful or farther along in their journey tell us that we need to do. Can you think of an example of something where you went against the grain or did it your own way and it actually worked out? All of it. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, um, the most immediate example is that I've been trying to outsource editing because uh, for obvious reasons. Mm. And um, I shoot so differently than like 98% of photographers that nobody will accept my photos to outsource my editing for me. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I guess that's cool, I guess. But I think it's just kind of been throughout the growth process. You know, I I mean, I've done something one way and then been like, let's tweak it this way. And you know, based on nothing other than just a feeling of, Mm -hmm. I I think this might be the right next step. And uh, when the pandemic hit and everybody was kind of just freaking out, I mean, that's when I really doubled down and and created the split between the two businesses that I now run. And I've always stayed off of social media. I've stayed away from following people who are doing what I'm doing. I've, I've really just tried to kind of keep my head down and tune out all the noise and just do exactly what I think is right, which is why I don't have a photo editor. (laughs) <laughs> selfishly I'm so glad because I feel like your editing is so magical and Thank you. Oh, amazing a part of what you're doing but hopefully you'll find somebody that you can equip to do I'm that sure. well for I'm you <laughs> can you think back of a time when you were getting started in business that you just kind of like cringe at or are glad that you grew out of that phase whatever it was oh my gosh everything I had I no idea what I was doing I mean and nobody teaches you like You know, I I also, I mean, I started this business when I was in my early 20s. I had a religion degree, so I had no business background whatsoever, no concept of how to run a business. I I still sometimes get like IRS letters and I'm like, what? You need what from me? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Like, excuse me? Um, A big thing that I hate saying this, but I'm going to say it. As a woman, I think it's very hard to run a business in certain aspects and Mm -hmm. I definitely was really like weak on pricing for a really long time and kind of approached it of like, oh, I mean, you could pay me this if you want to, but like, if you don't Mm -hmm. want to, it's 
fine. And I mean, we can figure it out. In fact, let me just pay you to do this work for you. And like, it'll be great. And it's just, yeah. it's going to be fine. And I wish I could go back and tell my younger self to kind of just throw your shoulders back and understand what goes into what you're doing and that you're worth it. But mm-hmm. beyond that, I mean, I've been really lucky that all of my like bigger business mistakes have been very well cushioned, I guess, because I'm so type A, I've always kind of just had, you know, 18 million plan Bs. So <laughs> I've thankfully never been in this super, super cringy situation, um, but there's still plenty of time. Mm. <laughs> The beautiful thing is though, I mean, I cringe when I look back at like early, early expressions of my brand that I put out in the world, but it's like, thankfully I got into action. Thankfully I gave myself the opportunity to evolve because especially with online business, I feel like you get to learn as you go or learn as you grow. And that's a part of the process. Like there can be this messy, pimply teenage version of yourself that you put out in the beginning and it gets better over time. So a million that. percent. Will you brag on yourself a little bit and tell me like one to three things that you're most proud of so far in your business? Ooh, I think the thing that I am most proud about is what I said earlier, just that I've gotten to where I've gotten and I've kind of done it just aggressively my way. And I can, I can think back to, you know, a million different stepping stones along the way of I mean, sitting at this very desk and just being like, well, um, I'm going to do this and let's just see how it goes. And thankfully, it's always worked out. And I mean, I think that there have been some really hard times, you know, losing big clients or losing big contracts or obviously COVID was huge for a photography based business. But I've always just kind of like been aggressively stubborn and pushing forward. And I feel like I say this every year. So, you know, I'll look back on this next year and laugh. But um this is, I think, the first year that it's really, really coming to fruition in a lot of different ways and expanding in a really notable way, which has been really fun to watch. I love that. What are your values or like, what are your principles? What are your guideposts that you use when you're trying to make hard decisions in your business? <laughs> the thing that I have always like just milestone gone by is do no harm and take no shit. When it, when it comes to any decision, you know, First of all, I mean, am I, do I run the risk of doing harm to anyone? Because if so, that's a non-starter for me. Um, I believe in karma. I believe in being a good person. Um, but then beyond that, you know, I, I, I kind of went too far in that direction for a really long time and then had to kind of put my big girl pants on and be like, also, I'm, I'm taking no shit. You know, the balance of those two kind of give you the right answer for any good decision. Like, am mm-hmm. I being a good person and am I being true to myself? Would you give any other advice to young Lindley who's just getting started in her business? To listen to herself more, for sure. You know, I spent a lot of time asking people if I was doing the right thing Mm -hmm. and looking to people to validate the decisions I was making. And the more I've grown up, the more I've realized that that doesn't matter as long as it's right for me. And really, I mean, young Lindley, I don't know, because that's it's hard to be objective there. But a young person starting in business, I would say, you know, invest in yourself, invest in your education, invest in everything, you know, go after what you're doing with full passion and surround yourself with the people who are going to support and encourage that passion. Mm, That was a great segue into my next and final question. What has been either the best or some of the best investments that you've ever made in your brand? The most ridiculous ones. And it's hard because talking about both of the businesses, but, you know, I was doing brand photography for five years before I decided I wanted to start doing weddings. And so when I decided I wanted to start doing weddings, I didn't just take a course on weddings or do this or do that. I flew to Paris and learned from arguably the best wedding photographer in the world about how to shoot weddings on film. And, you know, it's always been those big decisions for me that have led to the biggest results. And I, I see a lot of people in their businesses make small investments and make small steps. And, and that's great. I mean, if your goal is not incremental growth, then that's perfect. And that's excellent. But I think for me, the times when I've just gone out on a limb and been, been like, all right, let's try this. And, you know, it could crash and burn, but it could be amazing. It's always been amazing. So the really big risk moments have always yielded the biggest reward. Mm. And final, final question. What is either your favorite book or your favorite way to learn something new? 
My favorite book tends to be whatever I'm reading at the moment. So, so that's dangerous. Um, I think overall, Find Your Why was a really pivotal book for me as far as just w what I do and how I do it and also just living life. And reading to me, reading or, or audiobooks are my favorite way to learn. Just because you can go at your own pace, you can kind of digest as you need. And I think, you know, you can read the same book 18 different times and whatever you're going through in the moment, it's going to speak to that in that moment. So I think that's kind of a great way. I also, I mean, I love learning through conversations with people. I've been really lucky to surround myself with awesome business owners. And I mean, whether it's a conversation over, you know, tacos and rosé or a conversation while shooting a brand shoot, it's it's just always adding something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know why this popped in my mind, but there's that quote about like a man never steps in the same river twice, like the, the water's always flowing by that Reminded me. It's Pocahontas. Oh, is it? <laughs> <It's better. laughs> it's like this, this profound Chinese ism is from a Disney movie that makes I mean, perfect it, it sense. It could have originated with a profound Chinese ism, but that's definitely like a Pocahontas lyric. <laughs> oh, I love that. But yeah, that reminds me of rereading books because you're never the same person when you reread that same book. And yeah. I always find profound new insights. Apparently, I need to also rewatch Disney movies to find those. There's insights. a lot to be said for watching Disney movies. Sometimes I'll go on editing vendors and just watch all of them in, yes. in rapid order. So... Yes, yes. Oh, the Frozen Frozen 2 had so many life lessons. I, oh, I mean, they all do. It's it's unreal. If you could put a message onto a billboard or like into a ad for the Super Bowl, what would it say? Stay in your own lane and be true to yourself. I mean, I think that that's like it's so interesting and fascinating to, you know, I'll work with a lot of younger photographers or a lot of young business owners and people will come to me and be so concerned about, well, this person's doing this and this person's doing this. And how do I set myself apart from this? And I've had, you know, I've definitely worked with people who had that fear-based mentality of like, well, if you shot for this person and you shot for me, then aren't our photos going to look the same? And, you know, it's just, it's wild to me because the only reason that you're going to show up looking like someone else is if you're trying to be like someone else. And mm -hmm. it's funny because I'm very active on social media and yet I hardly ever open Instagram. I schedule everything out and never touch it because I don't want to know, unless I'm actively seeking inspiration, I don't want to know what other people are doing. I don't want to think about things the way that other people are thinking about things. I want to make sure that I'm thinking about things and approaching things the way that I want to. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, it would just be 30 seconds of just that in text form, honestly, because the only way that you're going to stand out, especially in today's world is if you're 100% you. Mm. I imagine it would be like this classy film, black and white montage. <laughs> if we're talking a, a very commercial. just like yeah. angular and high contrast and yes. lots of <laughs> lines. Yes. <laughs> you're oh. everyone do better. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much for making the time to share what you know about brand photography and about your own journey. It's so inspiring to see everything that you've done and to be able to work with you and to have this conversation. So thank you so much. You're amazing. Thank you for having me on here. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did. Thank you so much for being here. If you haven't yet, hit the like and the subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes of the Brand Gravity Show. Let us know in the comments, what was your favorite part of today's episode? If you haven't yet, I encourage you to find yourself a Lindley battle and get your brand portraits taken or your business brand photography done by somebody as capable and as talented as she is. Until next time, keep sharing your genius and keep building your brand because only you can impact the people that you are meant to serve and impact.